of my training is uh, controlled chaos. You know, once I get my body warmed up, I just like to go, you know, at least amount of uh, rest in between each exercise and as much weight as I possibly can handle each set. The biggest misconception of uh, my training people have is, um, like I said, I describe it as controlled chaos. And people really focus on the chaos and not so much of control. Um, so in saying that, you know, they just watch, you know, the heaviest, you know, uh, weight that I lift and not my build up to that weight. Um, where the weight is more controlled, the reps are more, more controlled, um, just so I can set my body up for that last set where I just go after it and do as much as I can, as heavy as I can. Uh, in the beginning, I trained uh, with my oldest brother. Um, he the one that got me into uh, uh, working out and um, it, it was pretty much what he set out. I followed, he taught me each exercise, how to perform correctly. Um, and then eventually um, had me go out on my own and uh, start working out on my own once I had to, uh, you know, work out at school during football season and all that stuff. I couldn't go to the gym with him. I had to be at the school with the other kids working out. And um, my coaches had a respect for my brother and what he did. So, of course, he let me uh, train the way he taught me, but also encouraged me to do some of the exercises so the other uh, students can see me, um, you know, working out and doing the stuff, the proper stuff for football, uh, so they will follow suit. Because um, I was into working out. You know, I would do it no matter what. Not everybody was into it as I was. So um, uh, they used me somewhat as a tool to motivate the other students as well to work out because I was so motivated and loved working out so much. I would say my training evolved uh, once I decided to become a bodybuilder is because I had to find out specific exercises for specific body parts to get them to grow correctly. Um, bodybuilding is about balance. Um, so you don't want to have small legs and upper, big upper body or big arms and small shoulders, you know. Um, you want a nice balanced physique and that's what bodybuilding is all about. So my training evolved because I had to study and I had to learn and I had to uh, uh, ask questions uh, to um, a lot of the, the tra different trainers in the gym and people who would, you know, give me an audience um, and the an answer to what I needed to do um, to become the, the bodybuilder I became today. Hmm. How did my training partners uh, well, influence my training style? Um, I think I influenced their training style more than they influenced mine. Because um, I pretty much, um, once my brother taught me what he taught me about training, uh, the importance of training, how to protect myself during training, um, that was the Bible, you know, for me. Um, and I never uh, let off that path. You know, I educated myself more on different types of exercises to improve my physique. But I pretty much stayed, you know, steady when it came to uh, my principles and, uh, you know, the way I trained. Um, so my workout partners more adapted the way I did, uh, what I did instead of me doing the latter. Me and Brad Horn, how we hooked up? Um, well, um, you know, I just had got out the military in um, Texas. It was, it was uh, Fort Hood was my last duty station in Texas. So, um, you know, that's when I started dabbling and competing again. Um, actually, when I lost my oldest brother, uh, around the time where uh, my, right at my 10 year mark, and uh, that was his dream was to be a pro bodybuilder. So to make his dream my dream and go towards that path. And uh, in competing, I saw Branch here and there and, um, uh, you know, in passing and, you know, we talked a bit or just said hello. Um, but I remember one particular time after the Nationals, we actually turned pro at the 2001 Nationals in Atlanta. Um, probably that Monday after the show, he came into the gym where I worked out, Strauss Fitness in uh, Bedford. And uh, I was like, man, there's a guy that uh, won the heavyweight class. So we talked and, um, he said, what are, you, what are you working out tomorrow? And I said, back, and he was like, you mind if I jump in? And I was like, hell no. And um, we've been working out ever since then.
Wow, the number one thing I brought to the parry, man, we're, we're so alike. Um, I think, uh, you know, I think we both bought the same, you know, the, the camaraderie, you know, we, we brought that uh, old, old time uh, bodybuilding feeling back. I remember growing up and I mentioned my brother earlier, growing up with my brother going to the Sasso's gym in uh, Hamilton, New Jersey, and then Oceanside gym in Oceanside, New Jersey. And uh, I remember back in the 80s, early 90s, man, everybody, it was just like powerlifting is today. That's how bodybuilding was back then. We would yell across the room at another guy that was deadlifting or squatting, you know, to get it. Or, you know, everybody would support everybody in the gym. It was so much fun. I had so much fun. Um, and so when I met up with Branch and we started training, I got that feeling, you know, back. I, I mean, you, you know, I can't, I can't even describe to you how great it felt just, you know, to have somebody, a brother in arms that felt the same way you felt and what you wanted to accomplish um, in the gym, outside of the gym, um, and, you know, on stage, off the stage, you know? Um, you know, we just brought that, you know, that feeling back of that old time bodybuilding support and, um, you know, I'm gonna support you and help you become the best, but I want to beat you on stage as well, you know? And uh, there's nothing better than that. Guys don't train like we do, um, you know, uh, just figuring it, figuring it out or just starting yesterday. You know, this is deep rooted uh, years of training, years of people in your life um, with that type of training, with that type of motivation. Um, even if I have to say, you know, our parents, you know, uh, it, what they instilled inside of us, you know, that drive, that hard work, you know, um, that never give up attitude, you know, and we both brought that to the table. And uh, I respect that wholeheartedly, and he does as well. So that's why it was just such a good, um, uh, you know, a team up or a good partnership uh, with us getting together um, because of the level of respect we have for each other. Uh, chest training. So um, what I think about my chest training, what I, what I think about chest training, well, Genetically, it's one of the things in my, that runs in my family. We all have predominantly uh, thick, big chests. Um, that's for sure. Um, Strength-wise, um, that's another thing that runs in my family that's rampant is a strength. Um, when I was uh, 16 years, 15, going on 16 years old, um, going into the ninth, from eighth grade going into ninth grade, um, I did a powerlifting meet. Um, there in Hampton, New Jersey against our rival school, St. Joe. I, I played for Hampton High School and St. Joe High School was our rival, the Catholic school there in town. And uh, I remember the, the uh, St. Joe coach was a big powerlifting guy, you know, huge. He held a couple of records and stuff like that. Everybody respected him. And he would put meets on uh, during, during the summer. And I remember going to the meet and I end up doing a 305 uh, pound bench press at that meet, you know, and that's when I discovered like, holy crap, I'm pretty strong, huh? So, yeah, that that's, uh, was a pretty cool deal. And, uh, it, it, you know, uh, I have to say even today, in doing that then, you would have thought like my bench would have been like amazing by the time I, you know, reached the age I am now. Um, but you know what? It never really took off that way. You know, it's really, it's still, it's really weird to me. Um, cause like I said, I was 15 going on 16, probably about a month or two from turning 16 and I did 305. So I would have thought I would have done at least six, 700 pounds by now. But, um, well, I've done 600 pounds, I have to say, but I did it with a shirt on, not wrong. You know, that's the problem. And uh, yeah, it just confuses me because everything else is, is stupid strong. And um, my chest is one of my biggest and uh, best body parts, but, um, yeah, I can't say my, you know, I had a, a more than exceptional bench. I just had pretty much an average bench, you know, after uh, I done that. So that's weird. How many pros uh, have trained with me? Um, Branch is pretty much the only one uh, that I consistently trained with. Um, we had guys come in and jump in with us here and there. Uh, not many, I think not even a, a handful, you know, I mean, 
that I can remember. That's why it hadn't been that many at all. But um, it's and the thing is, it's not always about the weight. Everybody focuses so much on the weight we we lift, the weight we leave, we lift the poundage and all that stuff. I mean, that is incredible. But you have to look at the speed we go as well. You know. Um, you know, our rest periods are usually when I'm doing my workout, he's resting. When I'm done, he's jumping in. So, I mean, 30 seconds to 45 seconds, you know, tops is uh, is the normal rest period in between, you know, us training. And uh, it catches up to you real quick if you're not up to speed with that. So it's not necessarily the weight that get people, but it's the speed that we go that kills them.